So we're going to be having a look at polar coordinates. Polar coordinates is chapter five of core pure two, and there's five different things that we do in this, okay? First one is just understanding what they are and starting to use them. The second one is doing converting between polar and Cartesian coordinates, or co polar and Cartesian equations as well. We'll then spend some time thinking about how we sketch curves, um, and then we're going to be doing some really interesting things with calculus. We're going to be finding the area enclosed by these loopy kind of curves, and then we'll be doing tangents, but the tangents that we do will always be either vertical or horizontal. We don't have enough maths to be able to do tangents at bits that aren't vertical or horizontal, so we kind of stop um, before completing all of that stuff with calculus. So what actually are polar coordinates? Well, you've actually encountered polar coordinates already when you've done complex numbers. We've already looked at the complex numbers as polar, polar versions. Recall that you could define a complex number either in its Cartesian form or in its polar form. And its polar form was just using the distance from the origin and the anti-clockwise angle from the positive axis. So remember with complex numbers, you might say something like the complex number, which is like 3e to the i pi, where you know that the length of it is 3 and the angle is pi. And you would know where to plot that on an Argand diagram. So technically, you already know what polar coordinates are. Okay. So this diagram here shows a comparison of both the polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinates. So the Cartesian coordinate that I've got for this dot here is just x, y, because obviously it is x across and it is y up. But the polar coordinate for this is r, where this first thing here is the length, the modulus. And then the second thing is the angle. And the angle, as we've said here, is measured anti-clockwise. It's going to be measured in radians for most of this topic that we're doing. I can't think of any examples where it won't be. And it's measured from the x-axis, from the positive x-axis. But again, that's kind of already written on your page here. One thing that you might like to know, because I will mention this during the, the lesson as well, is that the x-axis, the positive x-axis that we have here, is sometimes referred to as the initial line and that the origin that we have here is referred to as the pole. So this is actually a Cartesian diagram because I've got an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. If in eventually what you'll see is you will see a pole and you will see the initial line and then you will see some kind of like curve like drawn from it that you don't have the x and y drawn on it as well. But for most of the time, we'll be seeing it with both kind of axes showing together. And we're now going to try and do some conversions between the different coordinates. So we know that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sine theta. And r squared is x squared plus y squared. Just as a quick reminder of why that's true, if you just think about this triangle that you've got here, the hypotenuse is r. So x running along the bottom is just going to be x cos theta because it's adjacent. y is opposite the theta, so it's going to be y sine theta. And you can clearly see from the Pythagoras here that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. I've also put here that if you wanted to find out what theta is, it's the inverse tan of y over x. Again, when you look back at that diagram, it's the opposite divided by the adjacent. But what I've written afterwards is I advise always to draw or imagine a diagram rather than using this formula. Because if it falls in certain quadrants, the angle you just need to be really careful with. So it's worth actually drawing the diagram and figuring out what the angle is actually going to be. So the Cartesian coordinate is 0, 2. Where is that going to be in polar? First of all, what's the length of that line? Two. two. And what's the angle? Pi over, two. Pi over two. Because if you think about what that looks like, zero, two is up here. So it's gone around pi over two to be able to get to that. This time it says it's got a length of three and the angle is pi. What would that be as a coordinate? Zero, three, zero. Uh, minus three, zero. Good. It would be minus three. Zero, because we're saying from the pole, you're going three to the pi direction. Here's the initial line. That's pi, so it's going to be somewhere over here. So if you imagine that in the x, y coordinates, it's minus three, zero. What about one, one in Cartesian? It's going to be this point up here that is one across, one up. 
root 2, pi over 4. Minus 5, 12. We know it's a 13 to begin with. I would then probably do a little diagram for this. So I've got minus 5, whoops, 12 up here. So my triangle that I've got for that is that's a 12 and that's a 5. I'm going to find out what this angle here is. So I'll do the inverse tan of uh, 12 over 5. Am I in radians? Yep, inverse tan of 12 over 5. So this angle in here is 1.176. But remember, we want that angle. So we'll do pi minus that, which is 1.9 seven radians. So this one here is 1.97. That's why the diagram just helps you to reason whether you should be like subtracting it from pi or anything. Um, and I don't like just doing the y1 divided by the x. Yeah, sometimes if you do 12 divided by minus five, I just prefer to take the magnitude of the coordinates, find out what the angle is, and then decide where it lands on the thing that we've got. Okay, so this time we've got that the length of the line is six and that it's minus pi over 6. So I would think about a sketch that we've got here. So we know that the length of the line is 6, and it's coming minus pi over 6 like this. So this angle is pi over 6. So what would be the x part here? It's going to be cos 6 times cos of pi over 6, which is 3 root 3 it's root 3 over 2 multiplied by 6. And then the other part is going to be this bit here. So that's going to be 6 multiplied by the sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is a half. Multiplied it by 6 is 3. But it's coming downwards like this. Now, the other way that you could have found these coordinates, I personally just have like a visual mind, is we could have used the fact that x is equal to r cos theta. In other words, this is 6 cos pi over 6. And then this one is the y coordinate, which is r sine, I think that should have said minus pi over 6, minus pi over 6 as well. So you can just actually, if you wanted to, you can do r cos of this, r sine of this, and it will give you the x and y coordinates. So there's a little short part at the beginning of the exercise that we'll do eventually that allows you to start practicing going between them. You need to decide whether you prefer using these things that we've got up here or whether you just prefer kind of like the logic about how you think about what they look like in a diagram.